This is Hannah Anna, and you are listening to Queer Radio on 4 Triple Z. And welcome to the studio. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yay! Yeah, good to be back. Thank you so much for dropping so much wonderful music this year. Ah, oh, well, you're very welcome. Thank you for listening to it. <laughs> And the the news is that it's all going to be collected onto an EP mm-hmm. that is being launched on a totally, yeah, not very special day at all, Friday the 13th. Yes. <laughs> Why? Why Friday the 13th? I'll Friday? actually tell you there's a good reason for it. Friday the 13th is my lucky day because I was born on Friday the 13th. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, December, not September, but still. Oh, so this yeah. year's day. Yes. In Sorry, that's just me and Chris. <laughs> the it was, Scandinavian uh, Saint Lucia. The, yeah, anyway. Well, it's interesting because it was in the middle of an ice storm and it was the day that we were supposed to be doing my church Christmas pageant and my mom was directing it. And then I was and born that gone, day. And she's gone, oh, heck, we haven't got a baby Jesus. Wait a moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, I'll present yeah. one. Hello. Uh, <laughs> here's, one. here's one I prepared earlier. Um, the new, the EP will be called Visions. Yes. Is that simply because you, the, the songs you put together, we just heard Letters there, which is about you talking to yourself. It's mm, the way yeah. we're putting it apart. And I think it's really nice that we've got you following on from Ray White when we were talking about the Queensland Poetry Festival and oh. really the way that poetry is. Mm. So lyrics are poetic. Yes, absolutely. They don't have to be quite didactic. Mm. And in your way, you, you're telling the story of yourself and yeah. how you came from... Canada to Australia, which we talked about in January, and yeah, you married an Australian. I and, did. And he's landed you here, yeah, because it's better than we talked about last time. Too better than <laughs> you know minus twelve. I oh, like minus thirty now. Forty, yeah, all of that. Yeah, snowy yeah. and icy and all that. So the the idea of visions and mm. songs like Lost and Found and Letters and Oceanside and Stay with Me is this the facets of who you are in your life in Australia. Yes, in many ways it really does tell the story of like my last five years. So from when I got to Australia and all of kind of the discovery I have been doing. And it's interesting because all of those songs were written at different periods in time. Stay With Me was probably the oldest one. And they all kind of describe a different point. Um, but also the reason, so visions encompasses that and it also encompasses the fact that I still feel this is the very beginning. You know, it's like I've been here and I've just launched my career and this is just a seed. So it encompasses all of that. Writing, do you write off when you're composing this? Are you composing off keyboard? Are you composing off guitar? I know you're proficient in quite a few instruments, but which one do you feel the most you and when you're writing that's where you start definitely piano Mm -hmm. keyboard yeah guitar i only picked up uh just for practicality i did write stay with me guitar exactly yes you can't carry a keyboard exactly yeah it's much easier Mm -hmm. exactly but i'm way more comfortable way more proficient on keyboard so generally speaking that is my normal instrument writing instrument and what what happens in your writing process? Mm-hmm. How does it develop? So always starts with melodies and chord progression. So I will sit at the piano and I will just play with melodies and uh, chords and just start humming things and pretty much speaking gibberish. And then sure. sometimes certain phrases or certain, they'll just come out. They'll just kind of channel through me and that will generally kind of serve as the foundation for the concept or the meaning of the song. But it always is just channeled through the melody first. I know some singer-songwriters, perhaps ones who work with other writers who might be contributing more of the melody than they are, often are are writing poetic, coming back Mm. to the Queensland Poetry Festival, and are writing poet down. Have you ever done that? Have you ever kind of jotted some thoughts down and then found a melody to fit that? I have, but I don't do it as commonly. Sometimes if I like reach writer's block, I'll do something called object writing, 
which is sort of like a stream of consciousness and you're trying to invoke all of the senses within mm. the poetry. I do journal a lot though, like separate from songwriting. And I do think that kind of makes its way into the song. So a lot of the topics that I'll be writing and it's very poetic, my, my journal writing. I think a lot of that, some key phrases will, will stay in my mind and I'll use them in the songs. Going back to you, let's say high school, were you the girl that wrote journal? Were you the one that kept the book, that put all your thoughts in? Yes. <laughs> that, and everything you thought and felt about the, you, your classmates, the world around you, it, was it all contained in that? Um, so I never really wrote so much about like my classmates or like today I did this mm. or I hung out with this person. It was more like really like my deepest thoughts and feelings. Yeah. Is that okay? <laughs> because I'm wondering <laughs> if this is the way that creativity is uh, fostered in mm. young people, particularly people going through their own questioning yeah. of life. So yeah. if you've been raised as one particular gender and mm. you know that doesn't fit you, yeah. so looking at trans people, intersex people, mm -hmm. or people who identify as non-binary, yeah. and then you know, more simplistically cisgendered people, but knowing that sexual orientation is deeply felt, mm -hmm. enabling some form of creativity as a creative artist would that be you think an opportunity to help people who are feeling particularly vulnerable yes absolutely in every way shape and form i actually it's interesting because i have someone in my family who is a transgender woman mm -hmm. and is a musician as well and um they have described to me the process of how their own creativity and practicing that way of creative expression helped them because a lot of times you don't really know how to express the things you're feeling and we can connect and communicate with each other so much more through creativity, through music, through art. So for me, when I'm writing things, I know that what I'm writing and expressing through music someone else can connect to whether that's someone um you know who's going through you know, trying to figure out their sexual orientation whatever it is and they can relate to the feelings so in letters for example i speak a lot about how i always felt different and i felt like i never fit in and i had all of these questions as a child and all of these fears that i never get to be who i wanted to be and for someone who might be going through you know trying to figure out what's going on with with gender sexuality all of that they can relate to that in different ways um yeah lost and found mm -hmm. is the new single it's been out a few weeks yeah the reaction to it has it's just you you write the most melodic music Anna. <laughs> it is you. a beautiful fall of melody that your words fit well and it really does you said it really suits you and the video that you can see on our Facebook and our Twitter was shot with Brisbane yes. as your co-star. Yes, <laughs> Brisbane so as the co-star. It's really, I don't know, it's like, <laughs> I was saying before about lyrics don't have to be didactic, but I somehow I think that's, it's like saying, yep, this is my lost and found. Yeah. You know, when I wrote it, I wasn't that clear. It, again, it was like, it's like it was channeled. It was just, those were the words that came. And then after I wrote it, it started to unfold what the meaning behind it was. Mm. And it just seemed to fit so well. I was like, yes, this was it. This was my feeling when I came to Australia, I came to Brisbane. I didn't know what on earth I was doing. I was super lost. And then that whole journey of finding yourself in a brand new city. So it just felt really right to have. And you found this Australian to, to marry you. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And I mean, Lost and Found is really about our journey together. Sure. Because we came back here and he had been away from home for eight years. So that's a bit of Lost and Found, I wonder, yeah. too, is that yeah. when you go away from home, yeah. you come and see it in a, a very different light. And, and very I, different. I have only travelled 650 kilometres south. But, you know, <laughs> going back to Rockhampton from time to time, there is always a different Mm. I now see it in a very different way. Yeah, yeah. So that was. And I, I heard earlier on Dykes on Mics, and we didn't do our proper thanks to Kate and Ruth for their show tonight, but Ruth was talking about growing up on the Gold Coast and her experiences. And you look at Ruth and think, 
can't see you as a coasty chick, but <laughs> there is a there's a whole yeah. Oh, I actually I heard that. that earlier. I always joke because I grew up in New Farm. Now I live out <laughs> yeah. Ipswich way. Yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. like, hmm, interesting. I grew up in such a queer, supportive suburb before yeah. I even realised I was queer. So. Mm. Hmm. Well, we want to thank you for coming, and we're going to play Lost and Found, but straight after that, I want to play Oceanside. So, just briefly, mm. the, there's something immensely beautiful about Oceanside. Thank Can you. Can you give me some? Is there an Oceanside that you're thinking about? Because our two countries, Canada and Australia, mm. are both Pacific countries. They they are. Um, Oceanside. Yes, there is two two scenes that were playing out in my mind when I wrote that. One of the scenes was in the Mediterranean, and that was I lived in Europe for four months prior to coming to Australia, and the second was being on the coast here and just feeling again, what am I doing here? <laughs> Bathing myself in the waters and feeling like I'm home. This is this is it. You know, feeling that healing energy of the ocean. And that, it's like interesting. My whole life, I've just been trying to move closer and closer and closer to the ocean. <laughs> well, you can't get much closer than yeah. where you are here, except for actually living on the Sunshine Coast or Brighton yeah. Island or something like what that. What southern area? I'm in Kangaroo Point. Oh, I see you on That's the it. water. It's You're just... on the water. Yeah. I am on the water, and I go down all the time to the cliffs by the river. And, you know, it's only like 40 minute an hour drive to the beach which for me coming from toronto that's yeah. like <laughs> that's paradise hey, was on, you're on a lake in yeah yeah <laughs> yeah lakes are great I, I love lakes but it's not the same well as <laughs> you know. an australian so where we our lakes are small mm. and, we, and they're kind of few and far between yeah uh, either both being in on the shores of Lake Erie and going, that's not a lake, that's a sea. Uh, yeah. It's huge. Great I mean, lakes, they're huge. Water, you can't see the that's, other that's side. The, no. No, no. no, I thought I could. And even flying, like leaving Cleveland in the daytime, yeah. thought, oh, maybe I'll get to see Canada. No, still You couldn't. realize when you're in a plane how massive they are. Yeah. I remember telling my husband, I'm like, you know, in Lake Superior, there have been so many shipwrecks yeah. because of how crazy the waters get. And he's like, what? But it's a lake. How does yeah, that happen? Exactly. It happens. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the famous song by, you know, the uh, record of the Edmund Gordon Fitzgerald. Lightfoot. Gordon, Gordon Lightfoot. Gordon Lightfoot. Yeah. It was a huge hit here in Australia. Yeah. When the gills of November come early. That's how I learned about this shipwreck in Lake Superior. Oh, <laughs> From that song. You know, it's interesting because I'm always drawn to the water too. And it was only just then when you said you live at Kangaroo Point that I realized growing up in New Farm, I lived one block from the river. Mm. And I never, until this precise moment in time, realized how much that water played a part in my life as I was growing up and why oh. I'm so drawn to the water now. Wow, there you go. Very so We're going to give you two Hannah, <laughs> Hannah tracks and then we'll be back after 10. The Community Network News, around about 10, courtesy of Joy 94.9. It's 10 to 10. This is 4 Triple Z and Queer Radio. I love those moments where something just goes, oh, wow, yeah, that's good. 